of Pro Football Focus, PFF, put up their ranking of all 70 power conference starting quarterbacks or their ranking of them from top to bottom. Um, and yeah, the thing that was told to me, or so Mark, you know, he said, okay, cool. So uh, the PFF rankings and like I've seen, you know, ESPN with their top hundreds and, you know, like the NFL uh, players ranking top hundred, you know, things have come out. So he was like, okay, yeah, you know, Cam Ward's ranking. I'm like, all right, you know, let me know. It goes 14. And I go 14 overall. And he goes, oh, yeah, cool. And I'm like, all right. So I looked it up here in my other tab. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Not 14 overall. 14th at quarterback in the power, you know, conferences or whatever. You got me messed up. Absolutely the fuck not. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Like, you, I know you lying. If you think that Cam Ward is only... 14 and below some of the people who like with all due respect if you for me when you do these rankings it is entirely would you take this person it's like which one would you pick right so number one in the ranking goes to number two would you take number two or would you take number one okay cool then number three would you take that and like that's my viewpoint on these rankings is complete it's who's better in these in the this hierarchy. So I, I started, I let them know about the ranking and, and the, the pro football focus and everything. And so mine is like, yeah, like I was saying to, to the, the viewers, it's completely who is better. Cam Ward at 14, number one, that's low in a vacuum. Like, I don't really care. Like, he's a top five, if not three, returning quarterback in the country. So to be at 14 is ridiculous on its face. As I dig into this, they got Tyler Van Dyke at 15 and Cam Ward at 14. I know you motherfucking lying that he's only one place better. I'm sorry. I've seen it. I was here. Like, I wrote the articles. I did the good, the bad, the ugly. Like, I was there for all these stupid interceptions. I know you lying when you say that those are basically interchangeable parts in, in this ranking. No, absolutely not. And as I go down this list, right, there it is on the screen, uh, so I don't got to go back. But Drew Alar at Penn State, no, and again, in in immediate, who would you pick? I'm taking Cam Ward. Shut up. Alar drew a ton of criticism because, but but much of it wasn't warranted. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. What a no, miss me. And I know that they're they're centering the whole conversation on their grades, one to one in a vacuum on a football field, and I guarantee you. If you if you got James Franklin in a room and said, there's nobody who's going to hear this, coach, which one are you picking? He's taking Cam Ward. I'm sorry. You go up another one. Connor Wegman, Texas A&M, former five-star who I think is right about where he should be at 12. But based upon what we've seen from these players, no, give me Cam Ward. We go up Jalen Daniels. Again, I'm taking Cam Ward. Now, Jalen Daniels gives you a different dimension, right? Because he run like as a like pure runner and everything. But number one, you have major injury concerns there. And like he, to the point where like the coaches had to come out and say, look, we're being intentional by not playing him in the spring game and by limiting his reps because of the injuries that he sustained. And like, if you run that kind of offense, you probably do want Jalen Daniels. But in the offense that we run, which is, you know, power spread with a vertical passing game, Cam Ward any day of the week and twice on Saturday, and we move. Brady Cook, just a guy plus. He's a jag, J-A-G, just a guy. Uh, give me Cam And, like, he – Brady Cook did really well. And you look at those numbers that are, like, the raw numbers there. and the But, like – the raw numbers and grades are better for Cam Ward. What are we talking? And he has more talent around him. Well, in the collective, Luther Burden is the best receiver on either Missouri or Miami's roster. Let's be clear about that. I'm not going to go that far. But no, boom, give me Cam Ward. So at minimum, we're in top 10. We keep going. Preston Stone, I'm so sorry. You're a good player. I thought Miami could have and should have recruited him at the time. But he's an SMU legacy, and he's playing there and everything. And... The first four words there before breaking his leg. Shut it up. Give me Cam Ward. Now we're up into the top nine. Garrett Green, West Virginia. Bye. Moving on. Noah Fafita, Arizona. Bye. Moving on. And he's a good player. 
but I'm not taking him over Cam Ward. Jalen Milrow, the turnover machine, I mean, and look, and he's an incredible runner. He's a great athlete, but if I, no, 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 no. And like, I know that he's buoyed by Auburn doing the stupidest prevent defense I've ever seen and everything. No, I'm sorry. Going into this year and everything, give me Cam Ward. We're into the top six and we keep moving. Top five, Jackson Dart. Now you got a conversation. I think this is the first, and like the other ones, like I really breeze through. I think this is the real first time that you have a conversation. I think that these teams are in similar places because both of them spent a lot in the transfer portal to push it all to the center. It's There's really three teams that are really trying to go all in in a like, in a different way than normal. So not like your um your Georgia that's like built a monster. It's Miami, Oregon, I'm sorry, Miami, Ohio State and Old Miss are the three who are like, "Hey, we're spending the money in the portal. We're doing what we need to do. This is a year we're pushing." And I think that the uh, playoff hopes of both Miami and Old Miss hinge on their quarterback. But here around 5, mm, personally, I like Cam Ward, but I could see if people were like, mm, it's really Jackson Dart. But this is where the first point of conversation comes in. Anything else is asinine. Quinn Ewers, I'm not so sold on him. Shador Sanders, I think, is woefully overrated. Dylan Gabriel is an incredible college quarterback, but he has the arm of a middle schooler playing with a broken arm. You know what I mean? Like, he, there's, they're going to do numbers at Oregon, but like, and I know, yeah, a tremendous career and da, 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 but he's severely limited physically. And for what Miami does, I'm, I think Dylan Gabriel is way miscast at number two. And then Carson Beck at number one, fine. But like you, I, you, in my mind, you have a real conversation with three or four of these dudes at 14. Miss me with that. Absolutely not. Like some of the names they have Cam Ward ranked behind, uh, I don't know what, and, and also like it's on the screen, the next spot up from Tyler Van Dyke, a singular spot, a singular spot. Like, first of all, I think this is really speculative on, on Tyler Van Dyke bouncing back near his 2021, uh, you know, showing, but come on, bro. Like, no, you, mm -mm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, in a vacuum, regardless of anything else, even with injury concerns, because there are with Tyler Van Dyke, you're not taking Cam Rising over Tyler Van Dyke because Cam Rising's like down at 19. You know what I mean? You're not taking maybe Grayson McCall. I know injury concerns, but again, injury concerns with Tyler Van Dyke as well. You're not taking Grayson McCall. Depending on what you like, you're not going to take uh, KJ Jefferson, DJ at 17. I still think that's too high, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. So yeah, that that's, that's the, the the mini rant there. But, yeah, Cam Ward at 14, I think he has a better case for, like, the 14th best player overall returning in college football than the f number 14 starting quarterback in the power conferences. I think, I think PFF is woefully misguided here, like, on a, on a different – alien planet they're playing starfall they're playing jedi knights they're at a different part of the confederation like they are so far out there i just i can't even i it like i yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I i i can't even like does not compute this is crazy this is crazy when i rank uh players and we'll start with quarterbacks here I do my very best, and this is an impossible task, to separate the player, the individual player, from what they will produce, which is greatly impacted by offensive line, weapons, defenses that they will play, system, how good is the development, coaching at the quarterback position all of that impacts the player of course yeah. i try it's impossible to separate it and know only the almighty himself could do this but i i try to put myself in that place to say wow not good weapons coaching's questionable da, 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 da. i'm gonna rank this player higher meaning you know the the ultimate uh 
comparison or analogy would be if you took Pat Mahomes, if you said, okay, he's the best quarterback in the NFL, suddenly we're going to give, we're going to send him to whatever team is the worst coaching and the worst weapons, but he's still the same exact guy. So if you think he's the best, he's still the best, but he's going to produce much different statistics. Okay. I start on that premise. I also make a projection. So the projection obviously starts with, I'm a statistics guy, uh, but that's not everything. There has to be context put to it. There has to be an understanding of Drew Aller. You brought up Drew Aller. If you look at his stat line from last season, I'm a TD to pick guy in terms of, okay, that's where my, it's phenomenal. It's 25 to two. However, watch him play Ohio State and Michigan. He was borderline awful. I wouldn't even, I would take out the borderline to be he, honest. <laughs> like uh, he protected you know, the football is all he did, but he made no plays. He missed everyone. Sure, he was playing two of the top four or five defenses in the country and probably was a little overmatched along the offensive line and at wide receiver. So yeah. he did have some, he, Guys weren't making plays for him, right? But I, I will, I'll put this counterpoint because I, I looked it up uh, right now. Against O State, Drew Alar, four, or sorry, eighteen for forty-two. That's forty-two point nine percent for one ninety-one with a touchdown, an eighty-eight point ninety-two rating, four and a half yards an attempt. Against Michigan, ten for twenty-three. That's forty-three and a half percent for seventy yards, three yards of throw, and a touchdown, and no picks in either game. But if you also look against Northwestern, yeah, that team blew them out, but he only completed 54.5% of his passes for 5.7 an attempt. Less than half of his complete, uh, 16 for 33 at Illinois for 208 and none. You know, then you have Rutgers, 6 for 13, 46.2% against Mississippi in a bowl game, 19 for 39. Like, it ain't even just against the two big dogs, you know, and we've talked about it on this very show before about how Penn state beats everybody in the big 10, except for Ohio state and Michigan. Like that's literally for multiple years, what it has been. But even when you extrapolate or look at the other games, he was not great. Now, did he have a 85% completion game against Delaware? Sure did. Did he start the year 72 and a half percent against uh, West Virginia and three tutties, three twenty five, the best game that he played. Sure. But like, even, no, as you look through that year, that was not great. I'm sorry. It just, yeah, and in and, and all kinds of different places. But, I mean, that's the single out one player. But, yeah, I just, and that, again, even if you take all the things that you're talking about, about context and playmakers, and blah, 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 in a vacuum, all the, like, if you, again, like I talked about before, if you took the Miami profile team and put them in another jersey of another institution you would think that they're the best team in the acc and they would walk similarly how if clemson wore any other colors but purple and, uh, and orange and you looked at that profile team this year you'd be like that's an eight and four kind of squad good but nowhere near probably championship caliber but you know, they get the Lifetime Achievement Award of they've won a couple national championships. They've been a dominant, the dominant program in this conference for many years. Da, 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 da. In a vacuum, if you're like, cool, for whichever roster, because I think that both rosters at Penn State and Miami are upper echelon, would you, like, which quarterback would you take, all things being equal, in a vacuum? Dude, the answer's Cam Ward. And like I said, I believe going up that list until you get to five, and then I again I think that there's a couple guys who are just woefully overranked in there. But yeah, he's in the top five, if not the top three. 14. They must be smoking that good, that really, really strong, you know, that that loud, loud, that sticky icky. Well, I would rather have them be incompetent than be corrupt. Therefore, I hope no. there's nothing going on where they're cooking the books just yeah. to do something. I don't know that they've got a vendetta against somebody or they're trying to prop up certain teams, certain conferences, whatever. I hope that it's an honest misjudgment that I would agree. Yeah. Although my, 
my time viewing Cam Ward is not what it should have been to correctly assess him. I've not been wa- watching Washington State football games. Man, I've been watching after dark when he was at uh, Incarnate Word, and you know, yeah, he, he, yeah, though that was definitely uh, definitely destination or appointment viewing. But I will say, I think that they're centering their grading as the prism through which the conversation starts and ends. So whatever we grade as is the thing. And then we'll sprinkle in some relational context things, some narrative things and be like, Oh, Hey, and and whatever. But like, just to put it out there, but that didn't affect our ranking. It's purely on our proprietary numbers, which if you're an outlet that's pushing those numbers, it makes sense that you would base your, you know, rankings and such on those numbers exclusively. Um, I just think that that's, I'll call it flawed at best. I think that it's a deep quarterback class. I don't think it's an elite quarterback class. Mm -hmm. Like I think this caught my eye because somebody sent it to me and pointed out Will Howard at 27, which I think is a little bit low for him, but not terribly low. I think he's more like 20, but I started there and then I started through obviously looking at everyone else because they went one through 70. So these aren't necessarily the 70 best quarterbacks in the nation because there are some group of five guys that are better than the Mm -hmm. low end in the power four. But um, I start going through that and yeah, Cam Ward jumped out at me. Absolutely. Dylan Gabriel, I don't believe is as good as Bo Nix, but he's going to put up similar numbers. Mm -hmm. And he's going to benefit from being in this high octane, high flying, very talented offense with probably the best wide receiver in the big 10 included. And the numbers are going to look great, but is he that good? He's a good player. I I had no issue with anything you said about him. And I started to make that evaluation of the entire class based on, I don't see Carson Beck as C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, Trevor Lawrence. I don't see those guys, Deshaun Watson kind of players in -hmm. this, but I think it's a really good like 30 quarterback deep where, yeah, they're good players. No, I agree. And I mean, there's some others. I was scrolling down and when you said Will Howard, a name known on this very show, but he does not play for Miami, unfortunately. Nico Iamaliava at Tennessee. <sighs> Buddy. But I know that the sample size was small, and I know that first half in that bowl game against Iowa was a little fast, and we know Iowa had an elite defense and everything. $8 million Nico. He, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of those ones, but. Uh, you know, I think that that's going to bear itself out to be true uh, as well. But I don't know. But it, it, again, centering Miami, because duh. Um, even if you're just taking a snapshot of like right now going into the season where the pecking order is, Cam Ward at 14 is asinine, in my personal opinion. So you expect Nico to obviously be much better than 24 <laughs> postseason. Yeah. I mean, I get why they went with Joe Milton and like Tennessee scored points in like in spite of Joe Milton, you let a quarterback of Nico's caliber and talent. And I mean, he's just, I know he's going to be more accurate. He's like, yeah, I, I expect big things from $8 million Nico. And if you don't know, like there was reported back in the, uh, before, um, that there was a player who had an $8 million NIL deal uh, at like this time last year. Uh, it was like, yeah, it's a true freshman. He's at a, da, 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 and like, that was Nico Iamaliava and the, the Tennessee collective. So that's why I have taken a call on him, $8 million Nico. Um, and it was funny to me because like, everyone was talking about Jane Rashada in the same class and like, da, 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 and it was just like, Nico's over here, $8 million and not saying anything about it, but uh, yeah, that has been uh I, uh, I don't know if I need to say allegedly, but I believe, I believe I've seen that like multiple, like confirmed multiple times. So $8 million, Nico, Tennessee, high octane offense, go watch. College football is even more exciting with some action on the line. And the games are even better when you're cashing in. 
And the voice of college football is the place to be to get the greatest value. Let's start with my picks. 75% against the money line, 58% against the spread. I've got a 40-year track record. In fact, in 2023, at $100 played per game, you would have netted over $9,300. And guess what? I'm just the warm-up act. Steve Merrill, our ace in the hole, show stopper from Wager Talk. Six years with the voice of college football, over 30 years in the industry. Steve gives us analysis on all the big games, but you can't miss Steve's weekly under-the-radar pick, which went 21-5 and five against the spread the last two seasons. I repeat, 21-5 and five against the spread. You also get picks from some of our top analysts here at the Voice of College Football, including Steve Dace and Matt Zemick. Become a YouTube channel member or Patreon member for just $99 per month. Go to the main channel on YouTube, click join, and select the betting tier. Do the same thing on Patreon. Make 2024 a winner now.